Andy, can you remember when Angus got drafted? Yep. Viv, we, yeah. Were you guys sit on the couch holding hands? Is that sort of No, no. We well, we were there at Gold Coast. Right. Um, oh, so they had the... They invited, I think, yeah, like the top 10 prospects sort of thing and their family. So we went... How old would you have been? Uh, I think I was in like year nine, year 10, so maybe like 15, 16. Wow. Um, and <laughs> you were early in that. You would have been 14. Oh, yeah. So well, I remember um, Angus... There's a photo on my Instagram way back. Angus, myself, and Christian Petrarca, because they were the, the first two picked for Melbourne, and uh, yeah, it looked all had baby faces. But yeah, it was um, pretty special. <laughs> first time I'd sort of, I guess that sort of inspired us, Hamish and myself, to be like, far out, maybe we could get drafted as well if yeah. Angus can. So I remember very this very very vividly. We were sitting down, and before the draft, this was back when Angus got drafted. Would have been the same with you. They called out the player numbers. Yes. Player number 9634, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Right. And anyway, Angus had told us his player number, had written it down on the cards that we were sitting at, and he was like, well, you'll just know that this is what I was going to be. And I think it might have been an eight-digit number. And Paddy McCartan was the first draft pick that year, and the only number that was different was the last one. Wow. So we were sitting there, and St Kilda had spoken to him. And, eight you know, digits? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know what. ABM. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So they've just rattled off a phone number, and we're just sitting there just – Jaws about to hit the ground and the last number was different. And um, Well, so there was a chance he was going to go number one. Yeah, well, I St Kilda had spoken to him and the numbers were matching all the way up to the end. So, yeah, I remember that. And then, um, yeah, and then obviously went to Melbourne, so it was good. But did remember shitting myself there for a second thinking he's going to go number one. Good. Okay. So then Andrew is the next to get drafted. Pick two, 2017 national draft. Do you, uh, Angus, how do you feel about your younger brother going a pick in front of you in 2017? Yeah, I, I remember that night. Less about Andrew because he was obviously going to get drafted more for pain and what he was going through. But, yeah, I remember feeling like, oh, shit, really? (laughs) Like, at this point, I think, I don't know if I was the best golfer in the family, but I was, you know, running out of things to hang my hat on. I'd already beaten you on the ATAR score. Yeah, I lost the ATAR battle. I lost – I wasn't winning in golf at the time, you know. I played the most games, but that didn't really mean much on, on that night. I was happy, obviously, but secretly a bit flat. <laughs> he was devastated. Yeah, he, was, yeah, he was flat. I got that many messages from, like, some of his teammates saying, this bloke is gutted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then. I, gutted, I was happy. We'll was roll, happy. roll that into Hamish then. Of course, the younger brother gets picked up. You can keep going, Gus. What's it like for the family then, knowing that Hamish is up for the draft in the in the same draft, uh, ends up going pick 68, 2017, same draft as Andy, but a lot later. I don't know how many are after you, actually, but Angus, what's that feeling like? Not many. Yeah, so it was um, Andrew, mum and dad were all up. So I don't know where the draft was, Andrew, that year. We were in Sydney. They were Sydney. up in Sydney. So it was just me and Hamish, and I sort of said to him earlier in the day, because you'd had the – he missed out the year before and we were sort of talking about, you know, whatever he wanted to do, whatever Hayne wanted to do is what I was going to do because Will was away. It was just him and myself and we would just, you know, we could have quite conceivably just sat on the couch at home and watched it, but he wanted to be around um, the, our, you know, close family friends. Charlie Constable um, was getting drafted. Chook. Who's a, Chook. Chook's a close family friend. So we went around the Constable joint. Whose brother uh, is one of my best mates, Joel. Very Andrew nice. got drafted and that was sweet. Then Charlie... Constable got drafted at pick 36 or something. And yeah, so that was the next half of the rank. And then I just remember getting really, really nervous. And, you know, we've been on the cans all day and I was, you know, I was probably, you know, a little bit too far gone. And, you know, it the, the gets longer and longer in the draft and I'm getting more and more nervous. And the energy is like weird because we're celebrating Andrew and Charlie. Mm. And then, it's, you know, please, Hamish, please get drafted. And then... Yeah, I think he might have been the second last live pick. Teams had started passing and it oh, was no. looking pretty grim. And it was like, oh, you know, shit, this is going to happen again. And then um, I think it was Andrew Dillon who uh, walked out and Stixie knows just about everyone in footy. And, didn't, and he's got this weird look on his face. And at the time I was like, West Coast. Like West, West Coast was like a half a chance. Like I remember one of the teams that Hayne was you know, thinking was half a chance. Yes. He came out with this smirk on his face and – and then I just yeah remember losing absolutely going ballistic when he read his name out. So it was um it was honestly like it was better than my draft night. It was it was the most amazing emotional. And we were there with all our close family friends. It would have been so different 
and we decided to watch it by ourselves. So um, it worked out perfectly. Yeah, so good night. It was that, a good night. That's unreal. How did you feel? Because you were coming to Western Australia, which, wait, are you? The, no, you're a South Australian. Yeah, yeah. I'm a right. Croater. Right, you're a Croater apparently. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, that's allegedly. Yeah. Are you a Croater? Yeah, we're both Croater. Yeah, and you're a West Australian over there, aren't you, Angus? Yeah, I'm, I'm a sand broker. I broke the sand. <laughs> you <laughs> idiots. <laughs> there, there. How do you feel knowing your brother's coming over to Western Australia? Well, I don't yeah. know. Are you as nervous as Angus? Uh, like yeah, before he, before I, he gets I, picked up? I was. Um, or were you carrying on? No, no, I was, I was quite Sydney. nervous. The year before we were at home, yeah. when it was Hames, like, Yes. Um, typical draft year, like 18-year-old draft year. And Fox Footy had him rated to be picked up and, like, I was pretty confident that he would get picked up. And I was had like seen 26th Angus, or something on the Fox Footy rankings. Yeah, like, and had seen had, had seen Angus get picked up, had seen Hamish go through. Um, his top age year had a really good year and I was like, all right, so this is just what's going to happen. And then it, he didn't and I remember feeling, like, sick that night. And really? So then the next year when it was my turn, I'd been drafted, started doing interviews, like, I was like, I just hope he I hope he gets picked up and it would just be shattering for it to happen again and miss out. And I was doing an interview um, with Adam Chera. He got picked with me f- to Freo straight away as well and doing an interview. But then in the top left screen, they were still doing the dra- draft count. And then I think Freo had a pick maybe just after West Coast. No, nah, they picked Lloyd Meek two before me. Oh, before, yeah. Meek. So I was, I was always, whenever Freo came up, like, okay, who's going to be my teammate? Who am I moving over with? And then West Coast came up and... A lady who was interviewing me was like, oh, your brother just got drafted. And I was like, oh, like, awesome. How good. Where to? And then she's like, yeah, West Coast. And I just like couldn't believe it. Had gone from being like, okay, it's like I'm moving to a, acro- across Australia by myself to now like I'm moving over with Hamish. It's how good's that? So Packing your awesome. bags next to each other. Yeah. How did you feel? Mate, I um, I remember watching Andrew, knew it was going to happen. That was fine. Um, Charlie got picked 36. He was – we were all sitting on the couch – he moved over. So his best, his brother is my best mate. He's Andrew's best mate. We were sitting in there and it was like, yep, just the family. And then he went away at about pick 20 because he was, that's where he was about to go. He went into the other room and watched, got drafted. His name got called out. Everyone goes nuts. Would have been five picks later. All his mates were there. All his family was there. All his family friends were there. Everyone was having a party, celebrating him till about pick 50. And <laughs> I haven't moved off. I mean, I've obviously celebrated him. I settled back into the spot on the couch. Now, I think Adelaide and West Coast were the only two that I was a feasible chance of going to. Adelaide had said, "Mate, we, you know, you're on it. We, we, we're keen on you late in the draft, depending on other picks." Uh, and West Coast said, "We're potentially going to draft you late, but we're likely going to rookie you." So I was like, "I, I thought I was going to be rookie." Anyway, sitting there, and I just start like you're feeling it's like it's not going to happen, not going to happen. Everyone sort of gets that on my wavelength at about pick 55. So the party stops pretty much. Oh, boy. And, like, everyone is just dead inside and just waiting, 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 waiting. Pick 67, pick 68 comes around and I get caught out. Everyone goes nuts. But it was, um, yeah, Adelaide had, like, pick 64. I told everyone that it was Adelaide and West Coast. And Adelaide had pick 64 or something and didn't get picked and then, and then yeah, went nuts. And um, Andrew called me pretty much straight away and there was an interview on the phone and, I said, how fucking good is this? He's oh shit, we're recording. So I had to <laughs> start it again. <laughs> but yeah, it was um it was nuts. It was certainly nuts. So do you blokes fly over on the same flight? Same flight. Yeah. We were late yeah, actually. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah. um well, we pretty much you don't get you don't get very long. Um so yeah, I was in, in Sydney for the draft, had to stay over overnight, do a bunch of photos and, and whatnot that day. Come home Saturday night, and then you're flying out Sunday morning. So you've got like I pretty much had 24 hours to get packed. You had a little bit longer because you were yeah, at home. Had a we were in the – like we got to the airport. We had enough time. We got there with like an hour and 20 minutes to go. We're waiting in line at um, Virgin It's a, and it's like, uh, you know, is anybody here late boarding for flight? We were gas bagging. We'd just been picked up. Yeah. We would, we'd we, just yeah. been drafted. Yeah, we, we're standing in a line together. Mum and Dad have said, said catch you later. Ya. See you next So we're standing time, yeah. in this line going, far out. We're about to move. Like we're, we're moving. Of, yeah. And we're just talking to each other, but and like, we yeah. completely missed the lady saying. I've seen, Last I've seen call. Jack Petricelli put his bags on, and he'd moved away. Like it, it was, there, it was obviously like, yep, no worries, I'm in line. And then all of a sudden, it was like last call to um, our flight. Bought clo- our flight left at like let's say two o'clock. There was um, last call for flight JF something to Adelaide, leaving at two fifteen. I was like, oh shit, that's uh, that's after hours. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I said, uh, we, what about Perth? And she was like. The checking's already closed. And we're like, oh, fuck. 
So we had to like run down. Andrew called their f- someone and their footy manager called Ross Lyon, who was then coming over. Ross ended up Ross taking Lyon. my bag. Ross ended up taking, taking our bag. So we had to go down, bags. pay for this like pay for this airport, basically like an airport storage unit to put our bags in. Tell Ross where it was. He came, picked them up, flew them over, and then your footy manager dropped them at our place. Angus, yeah. does this surprise you with these two? You're looking at this just <laughs> like shaking your head. Yeah, Andrew's um. Developing a little bit of a habit, you know, late for a couple of things. Um, <laughs> no, I, oh, you know, it, I remember being so excited for the two of them, and, and there was such a it was such a whirlwind weekend. Like, you know, uh, fair enough, I reckon. At least you got on the flight. If you hadn't missed the flight, it would have been. Oh, tough, and then but. we were sprinting oh, through yeah. the airport. Like I'm talking land speed records, 400 meters at 50 seconds, sort of stuff. Wow, you sprinting. only get to make a first impression once, and yeah, exactly. we were borderline going to miss our <laughs> flight. To go to this home state of our new job. Jeez, that would have been yeah. a good news story. Brayshaw yeah. boys failed to land. 